Welcome to what's new in Microsoft 365 and Copilot for January 2024. So we're looking back at January. We wait for the whole month to be done. We've got Copilot lists, OneDrive, Outlook, Teams, and a couple from around 365. I only look focus on the main things in the video, but go and have a look at the blog. Busy month for Microsoft, it seems. Over 100 updates there. So new updates, we've got old updates which have been delayed, and we've got a few ones to watch which are going a little bit further out. It's a couple of real interesting things on the horizon. First of all, let's have a look at uh, where's Clippy competition. So Clippy, that's uh, a version of Clippy. So Clippy's uh, winter beast uh, cousin uh, was on the stream view and edit mode toggle slide and this month you're looking for this thing so i asked designer to give me a type of clip he said this was a um a robotic paper clip with a face and you know that i, I take the first thing i get is, is what i is what i what i what i share rather than make it too polished and that is the thing you're looking for if you spot it and you fill out the form with a few details so there's no spam it's just for me to contact you if you get pulled out of the hat you get a 50 pound uh, voucher so let's find out who has won last month's i put last week's on there i actually mean last month so i'm not doing this every week okay so let's spin that wheel Da, da, da. Who's it going to be? I'm not going to say too soon because it kind of skips sliding over as it has done now. And Maggie E. So I'm not saying Maggie's full name out on here. So Maggie E, look out, there'll be a £50 voucher coming your way. So let's get back on with this month's update. So let's go and see what is happening with Copilot. So this is a new page I've set up all about Microsoft Copilot for end users. There's lots to learn about Copilot, but I try to focus on the stuff that affects uh, the people who will eventually use it. So on here, I've got what is Copilot, what can it do? Uh, how do you learn about it? Some really good Microsoft links on there. Uh, talk about how you get it. We'll actually link off to that page. And at the bottom, you'll see that I'm sharing what's new. This is a good place to start. If you don't know what the whole Copilot thing is about, go and have a look at this page and it should give you a good introduction. And those, uh, the section, uh, how can I learn about it? There's loads of stuff from Microsoft on there, so go and check that out. Okay, so getting uh, onto this. So how do you get to it? So it is a permanent link at the top of the blog. So whenever you're interested, go and have a look up there and you will be able to read all about it. Okay, so big month in Copilot. So you might already know that Microsoft made it uh, generally available. Previously, a lot of people were upset that you had to order 300 licenses and uh, sign up for three years. That was a big commitment at £30 uh, ahead. Anyway, so at the middle of the month, two weeks ago, it seems like a long time ago already, uh, they, they released this, so you have Copilot Pro for individuals. Um, so I've had quite a, quite a good play with it actually, and it's amazing what it can do um, as an individual. If you do, I think the main value is if you do a lot with uh, Word or, or PowerPoint or Excel, then you might see some good value there. Definitely worth you, you checking it out. As for business and enterprise, you can see that the, the, the 300 seats has been rescinded and lots of people can now have this. I've got it and I really like it uh, and look out for more content and more updates about Copilot. Okie dokie, so, Let's go to uh, just one example. So I'm just gonna put one thing in here about what it can do. So in the workplace, often you go to OneDrive and you share your documents with people. So in this example here of sharing a Word document, it will create an AI summary as part of your share. You can, you can select it to say, yes, I wanna do this. So when the person receives the share, they get a summary of the document before they even open it. So just a little taster of, uh, of uh, things that are to come. Okay. Let's have a look at Microsoft Lists. So, a bit worried this update. So I talked about this last year, these new updates to Microsoft Lists. And, and Microsoft is saying that, uh, that these that this is an extension of that previous rollout and the updates are coming to team sites, lists, uh, progressive web apps and teams. And uh, they don't list all the same things. So I think they're just catching up if I'm honest. I think it's the same update, but they're just finishing it off. So lists um, is, is a lot faster. 
Uh, now, I quite like the idea of that, but I'd be interested because I was just working with a, a, a client and I know it's probably not best practice, but we had reason to add, I think it was 500 options in a drop down. It was, well, I'm not gonna say it, it doesn't matter what it was. But anyway, they had to have it. And it takes quite a while to load. I'm wondering whether it, it uh, will make that that the um, individual drop downs load faster as well, because it does take a, a few seconds. Anyway, so you can see in real time who you're collaborating with on your list, which is useful. You can drag and drop your images there. You can see we're just dragging them across. So it's just getting a little bit easier to use. So you might already have this uh, from, from, the, from the website, um, you're using lists in the web, uh, but, uh, it, I think they're just finishing off finishing off that last update. Anyway, due late February to late June this year, so being dragged out a bit, but uh, looking forward to that. Okay, moving on to OneDrive. And what have we got here? So, what access to your OneDrive files using uh, OneDrive for the web when offline? So, is it offline mode for uh, OneDrive? A bit like you can have the, 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 the app, um, but people like the, the, the online experience more, or some people do. Anyway, this icon you see on the screen here, this tells you that it's available uh, for, for your OneDrive, um, but uh, it's delayed, and but we'll be here between mid-February and mid-April. Okay, let's go and look at what's happening in Outlook. So the ability to switch to the new groups experience in Outlook on the web. So thinking about what groups give you. So groups is just the way we organize our people and our access to applications uh, and files. And this is just a nice way for you, instead of say going to Teams or to SharePoint and collaborating from there, you can go to the group and you can see everything in, in one place, the people, the files, and, and everything else that you've got access to. So it's this home, this, this, the, the group's homepage is a place to connect and communicate with, with, with your people. So when I turn it on, here's what I got. So the, uh, as it kind of steps me through as, as I turn it on, what, what's, what's coming my way. So I've got to stay up to, to date with, with our groups, uh, connect with Microsoft 365 apps, uh, my group mails are all being in one place, and I can collaborate on shared files. So everything that's, that, that, that's, with, that's got the group's got access to is gonna be in one place. So that might be that that's how your mind works rather than working from the, from the apps. Uh, that, folks, I see it now in, um, in, in early access, but it's due uh, mid-February to late March this year. Okay, so we are now moving over to Teams. So a change in file behavior in classic Microsoft Teams. So this is quite important, not the most exciting topic in the world. So all files in the, in the shared channels will open in the browser instead of within Teams, um, in, in classic Teams. That took me a second to read that, didn't it? A Word, uh, Excel, and PowerPoint files that were not pinned using the latest Teams apps will need to be re-pinned for you to, to be able to, to, to edit. So you might have to, if you've got a, if you've got a Word documents or, or PowerPoint documents in there, you might have to re-pin them yeah, in, in classic. Um, this is going to start happening uh, from mid-February to mid-March. But if I'm honest, folks, Classic Teams is only going to be, you'll only be able to access it till the end of March. So I wonder if it's worth moving to Teams rather than trying to fix this. Anyway, along a similar vein, the website tab in new Teams will no longer open uh, inside Teams. So Teams is losing the ability to show websites inside the website tab and they will instead open in a browser. It's new, uh, new Teams client um, only. Uh, it's for new and existing website tabs. So even if you've got the, this set up, uh, they're not gonna work. So if you want to be able to see, see I don't know, see Word documents, uh, or whatever it might be, inside Teams, you're going to have to add the appropriate app instead of using the website app. I, um, I think this is a real shame, in a way, uh, I've read why they're doing it, and it's for security and best practice. Uh, but I really like the ability uh, to, to to add stuff using the website app. It's been the it's been useful for five or six years, or maybe even longer if you had real early access. And it's just like a nice, simple way of adding things. You got the the chat. I, actually, that's the next point here. Will to somehow have the chat conversation be available next to the thing that you open? I hope so, actually, uh, because it's super useful. Um, 
anyway, a bit of a shame. You're going to have to maybe do a, a bit of tidying up in Teams if you still want that to be able to be able to open things inside Teams. Uh, it's not for <laughs> education tenants. Uh, yes, but it's going to be coming. Anyway, so due from early April uh, this year. So right, right, just just after the cutoff from going to old teams to new teams, that change is coming. Okay, so coming through the teams, the ability to hide the general channel. And see, I don't know where it's going to go. I'm guessing it's just going to be just in there, just like it would be for any other channel. Uh, if the general channel is the only channel that you're showing, it will hide the whole team. Does it matter? So I saw on uh, LinkedIn someone saying, uh, "How are you going to contact everybody now? How are they going to see see your stuff? Do you have to do uh, the app mention for the team?" Well, if someone's lucky to be hiding this, they didn't have notifications turned on anyway, so they weren't seeing your content anyway, were they? So even if you put it put it put it in the general channel, they're not necessarily seeing it because the notifications can be turned off. So. Yes, you'd have to uh, you'd have to at mention them. Um, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I don't think it does because the people who are going to be hiding this weren't looking at it anyway. So due mid February to uh, mid March two thousand twenty-four. Okay, coming soon. The ability to duplicate an existing Teams webinar. So you've got an existing one already, and you can use that to duplicate. It would include uh, details like the webinar details, the presenters, any theming that you've got done. The organizer can edit whatever gets carried over, so it's a good template. You can, of course, edit everything. And folks, that is due early to late March this year. Okay, so content from camera on new teams. So generally speaking, I don't always cite whether it's new teams or old teams. As a really rough rule, this is not, don't hold me to this. But if it's something good, then it's probably new teams. If it's something bad, it's probably old teams they're taking off you off you as they as they're clearing things up. Um, this enables attendees to see your whiteboard or your documents. So you can see on the screen here, we're setting it up. So we're choosing our whiteboard. What I haven't shown you on the screen here is the way that uh, it then kind of pulls it in, levels it out, and makes it all perfect, so that uh, so people see it see it perfectly. You can write on it, and then uh, even if you go in front of it people can still see through you to see the content, which is super clever. So it's recommended you use your, your laptop uh, or your built-in or USB connected camera for documents. It does the same behavior. It identifies it, you confirm it, and then it brings it up to be the whole thing that it shows. Recommends that you use a document camera, it's got an overhead camera. Uh, folks, this is available uh, early to mid-March this year. Okay, so Copilot 1, I have a bit of a dilemma. If I have something to do with Copilot, do I have this in the start and then have all the Copilot stuff in one place? Or when I'm talking about Teams, do I talk about any Copilot stuff when I get to Teams? I don't, I don't actually know it, if I'm honest. You can see that I've somehow got a mix of both. Um, I will work it out. Anyway, navigating away from Microsoft uh, Teams chat and channel Copilot will no longer close Copilot. So right now, if you uh, if you're using Copilot in a, in a chat and then you come away, you come back and it's gone and you have to reopen it again. So just so you can see a bit of context, so you can see the Copilot panel down the side. And I, I know this is clunky, this is not my best work, but I've just copy and pasted this on quickly. You can see here that I'm having a chat with Karen. Over on the right hand side, I appreciate it, it's quite small over there. Um, I've got a Copilot icon, I click that, and then you can see that that's where we get this chat panel here. Anyway, I was moving away, or we, you were moving away, from uh, from this chat, and you come back and you'd have to reopen it again. Anyway, that is not going to happen from now on. Da -da -da, you have to re-click that Copilot icon if you want it to close, <clears throat> and it's due mid-February uh, this year on desktop and in web. Okay. The ability to share colleague contact information inside your team's chat is coming. So I'm having a chat with somebody, I want to share Bob's details. So I do the curly out sign, and then I get this new option here, share someone's uh, contact info. I've got the ability to search for Bob, and you can see there that we've got Bob, or in this case, Bruno has popped up. So yes, I'm happy with them. And you can see there that it's confirming that that person won't be notified. I'm not at mentioning them. I'm just sharing their contact card. So I'm not invading anyone's privacy or sharing anything I shouldn't. So yes, I do want that. And then you'll see the person's name pop up in the chat and you can see a little tiny icon next to their name showing you that it's a contact card. 
due early to mid February this year. And this looks interesting, real time calendar notifications are coming to your team's activity feed. I have almost instantaneously two thoughts on this. I think it's awesome. I mean, look at that. Meeting invites, my meeting updates, my cancellations, anyone's forwarding my meetings, I see it all in there. And then almost at the same time, I'm like, well, my activity feed is busy enough. Anyway, so click on that notification and then you can go and have a look at it. And luckily, if it's the other me that's looking at this, I can manage this in settings and uh, quieten them those down if I want to. It'd be nice actually if I could just have the uh, the meeting invites coming to here and actually the other stuff maybe not so much. Anyway, you'll you'll work it out, no doubt. So due mid to late February this year. And teams to get meeting invite improvements. So I'm going to be real quick about this. So we've got uh, the link for joining and the meeting will be reworded and large. You can see it there. And the simplest, most key things about the top and there's a line underneath them. Uh, up to the right, we've got need help. So you can get help if you if you need to. So uh, the meeting ID and passcode uh, separates. So you can see there's a line there just separating things out. And then underneath, um, these are the links just for the organizer. Uh, and they're then but I'm out of the way on their own. So folks, due mid-February to mid-March this year. And almost done. Let's have a look at what's going on around 365. Update to the sharing experience in Microsoft 365 apps. This seems like such a lot. I shared this at the start of the month. It seems like a long time ago, but generally it always feels feels long, right? Um, so what we got here, so the share control uh, uh, across all 365 apps is changing. So focusing on invite and the copy link. So you can see here uh, on the right hand side, so first of all note that the, the, the sharing card for the links has moved from the top and is now moved down next to a uh, copy link. Uh, so if I click uh, invite allows me to grant direct access to, to, to people um, who, who I choose. And the copy link, uh, once it's copied, has a success icon uh, or a little banner that pops up. It tells me, yes, it's copied to my clipboard, but it also tells me the scope of the copy, so I'm not oversharing. Click on the cog if you need to, that little the little cog to, to, to tweak the extent of your sharing if you need to. Folks, due uh, by early February, so any day now if you haven't already got this. Well, look at that, we are done already. Folks, make sure that you check me out on all the socials. Uh, we've got Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. I need to change the Twitter icon and call that X, don't I? And what's going on with my camera feed? Anyway, I'll have to look at that for next week. Uh, folks, we're done. Hopefully that was helpful. I uh, guess I will catch you next time.